Hey everyone, welcome to another 360 in 360, providing an overview of a certain technology in about 360 seconds. And for this topic, I want to talk about Azure AD administrative units, um, really what they are and the benefit they bring us. Now, if we think about ordinarily Azure Active Directory, so we have an Azure AD instance. So we have a certain tenant, and in that tenant, we have our resources. So we have lots of different users in that tenant. I use a bunch of different colors up there. So really just to signify, I have different users. And I could also obviously have groups. So I have group objects, and in those group objects, I could place certain users as well. But this is a flat structure. There is no hierarchy. I have an Azure AD instance, and then in that Azure AD instance, I have users, groups, service principles, applications, all these different types of objects. Now, on that Azure Active Directory, um, I have various roles. Now, there are a lot of these roles. If I actually jump over to the portal, and go to roles and I can see all these Azure AD roles. There are a lot of them. Now this is different from Azure Resource Manager roles. They're defined in Azure. These are Azure AD. These really apply to Azure AD, things like Office 365. And these various roles like Global Administrator, well, they have various permissions. There's all these different permissions available. Obviously, Global Administrator, is a very, very powerful role. Be very careful about who I gave that to. But there's all these various roles that are available within Azure AD. So think about, I give a role to a user primarily today. There are these new cloud group capabilities, but really in Azure AD, it's I give it to users. So I'm going to give a user a certain role, and that applies to the entire Azure AD instance. I can't ordinarily give a role just to this subset of the user population. Now, if you think about, well, I've got a certain department, I've got a branch office. Well, I would like to be able to have a local, maybe user administrator, a local help desk, who can only perform certain actions, be given a role at the scope of a subset of the users, at a subset of the groups. And as you might expect, that's exactly what administrative units actually perform. So when I can now create this administrative unit in Azure Active Directory. Now to create an administrative unit, um, I have to be a global administrator or a privileged role administrator. So only those roles can create an administrative unit. And then what I can do is I can essentially add users into that administrative unit. I can even add groups into that administrative unit. Now I can have many administrative units. I could have another administrative unit over here, and I could have the, the same user added to a different AU. So it's not a structure. I can have the same user in many different administrative units. I cannot nest them. I could not put this administrative unit in a different administrative unit. But the point is, um, I've taken certain users and I could take groups as well and add them into an administrative unit. And there are then roles that I can apply at the administrative unit level. So now I could give someone, again, a user, one of these roles, but it's now scoped at this specific administrative unit. So, hey, you branch manager, um, you can have the user admin role only for the people in your branch. Different branch manager, you can have it for your users, etc., etc. Now, this is an Azure AD feature. This is not a feature of B2C. So B2C is that different type of Azure AD instance designed for consumer kind of facing applications. 
This does not apply to those. This is just for regular Azure Active Directory. Now, to be given a role at an administrative unit level, what I require as one of those kind of admins is an Azure ADP1 or above license. For the people inside it, they can be the free SKU. There's no additional licensing for them. So essentially, I'm, I'm putting things inside this administrative unit and essentially delegating the role just at that scope. So if I can think about it, if I jump over to administrative units, this is in preview at this time, and I've created two. Now I've got one called Avengers. And in Avengers, it's just someone called Thor, Odin son. And right now I've not given really anyone. These are the roles you can apply, but no one has these. But if I go and look at Justice League, well, I've got four people in the Justice League. I've also added a group called the Hero Group. And I'll talk about this in a second. And this actually has Thor in it. If I actually go and um, select the Hero Group and look at the members, that has Thor in it. So someone that's not natively a member of that Justice League. And then I have these roles. And what I've done is I've given Clark that user administrator role for that administrative unit. So Clark ordinarily has no powers in Azure AD, wouldn't normally be able to do anything to accounts. If I jump over now to a different browser, so I'm actually logged in as Clark. This is Clark in Azure AD users and computers. And if he tried, for example, to let's say, um, we'll, we'll look at Thor's account actually is a good example of this. And I'll reset Thor's password. I can't. I don't have the required permissions. Now, that's going to confuse you at first because I added a group that Thor was in into the administrative unit. But notice I cannot do anything to that account. Let's jump out. Let's look at Bruce Wayne and try the same thing. Well, that one I can do. I'll change it to, hey, I'm, I'm Batman. Um, but I can modify that one. So you can see I've delegated that scope to this user. There's even a mystaff.microsoft.com separate portal where I could go and for users in administrative units I've got permissions for, once again, uh, I can go and actually do, hey, I'm going to reset that password. I could do that. But if I go and look at a different administrative unit and the users in there, I can't reset the password. It's grayed out. So it's delegating just at a certain level. Now let's think back to this then. So remember, I added users and I can add groups. It's even there in the portal. You can add users, you can add groups. When I add groups into an administrative unit, it is not adding the people in that group within the administrative unit's control. It is adding the group object within the administrative control. So what that means is, hey, I could perform group management functions on that group object. I could change its membership. I could change its properties. But it does not bring the people in that group into my control. That's why even though I added a group that had Thor in it, I couldn't reset Thor's password. And it really makes a lot of sense if you think about it because if I had the ability to manage a group and then anyone in that group, I could manage the people, well, I could essentially fairly easily elevate my privileges. If I'm managing a group and I can manage the people in the group, I could add more people into that group because I want to manage their account. I could say, oh, okay, I manage this group. I'm going to add Bob into that group. And now because Bob's in the group that I manage, I could manage Bob. Well, now I can go and reset his password and get access to things they can do. So it's very specifically, it does not do that. I have to explicitly have people added to the administrative unit that I can manage. Just because they're in a group I can manage doesn't mean I can manage the people. So that's kind of an important thing to understand because it may be confusing. I add a group to administrative unit, but I can't manage the people. No, you have to add them into the admin unit. If it was anyone in the group, then I could mess around with permissions. It's a security thing. 
I can bulk add users, I can do CSV files, I can add this through the portal, through PowerShell, through scripting, through REST API. There are many ways I can actually do bulk operations for this. Um, likewise, if there was an account in here that had like a global scope permission, I wouldn't be able to like reset that password either. Because again, it would be an elevated privilege concern. So there are safeguards in there to protect me. But really the point of this process is that, hey, now I can create these administrative units. I can put people in those administrative units. Again, I need high privileges to do that, that global administrator and that privileged role administrator. I can add people into the unit and then I can grant those roles to certain people to give them a very granular set of control. The permissions available again, if we jump out, I can go and look at one of these and I can actually see the roles. So it seems like authentication administrator, groups administrator, help desk administrator, license, password, and user. And then there's different sets of actions. I can pick the ones that make sense for me. So that is um, Azure AD administrative units. Really, again, users can be in multiple administrative units and then I delegate someone to have a role now at a smaller scope. Great for if I want to give people, hey, you can manage your department, you, know, you can manage your branch. And they have that nice separate portal for my staff to make it even a, a nicer user experience. Um, I hope this was useful. If it was, please, as always, uh, like, subscribe, comment and share. Until next time, take care.